Unit 3 uh, case study for the 25th of May 2023 is upon us and you can see from the information on my screen that this exam takes place on the 25th of May. Uh, if we scroll down we can see the instructions are as they always are. You can do whatever you like with the pre-release material that has been made available to you. You can revise from it. You can use it to make links with the specification. You can write all over it. You can highlight it. You can do whatever you want with it, but you can't take it into the exam with you. So it's to prepare you. When you arrive in the exam room on the day, you will be given a nice, clean copy of this pre-release material along with uh, a copy of the exam paper. So it is four pages long. And it focuses almost entirely on the testing and um, the documentation that is produced during and after that testing process. So let's have a look. The scenario is there is a company called Pen Perimeter. They are a cybersecurity company and they provide a variety of cybersecurity services along with things like penetration testing simulated cybersecurity attacks and simulated phishing attacks. So we can test the systems and we can test the users of those systems to see whether they'd, you know, fall prey to uh, an attack of some description. They also do tests on web applications, mobile applications and on the Wi-Fi network. It tells us the clients of Pen Perimeter include charities, businesses, healthcare providers and government state departments. Now, these have been, I think, deliberately chosen because they're very different in terms of what they do and the type of information that they need to protect is also, um, you know, it's on different levels of classification. So charities, um, obviously, um, you know, they need to protect the data like every uh, organization does, but the data they have is not going to be anywhere near as sensitive or classified as government state departments, for example. Healthcare providers will have medical information that is very sensitive and personal that charities may not need to know, businesses may not need to know. So, they're bound to focus in on these different types of organization to see whether you have an understanding of how the information that they store um, has different levels of sensitivity, different levels of uh, classification. Tells us Pen Perimeter provide clients with a test report and the test report includes recommendations on how the client's cybersecurity can be improved. So when they've done one of these penetration tests, a report is produced and it tells you, you know, were they able to get through the security. When there was a simulated cyber security attack, uh, a, a, a document will be produced, you know, um, to explain what they did and what happened and so on. And the same with the simulated uh, phishing attacks. You, you get a report that says how many phishing emails they sent out, how many people responded to it and so on. And the same with these tests on the web apps and mobile apps and the Wi-Fi. You'll get a test report telling you what the outcome of these tests were. So the purpose of this then is you give it to the organization, whether they be the government or a charity, uh, and they'll have a look at this and then they'll decide, do we need to improve security on certain parts of our network? Do we need to train our staff on recognizing what's a phishing attack and what isn't? Do we need to train our technicians to understand, um, you know, which areas of our network have got weaknesses, for example? Um, is there an issue with the Wi-Fi that we maybe can, you know, make that a little bit more secure? Or, or is there issues with their web apps? Can we, uh, you know, fall prey to SQL injection and things like that? So... Um, these tests are designed to, um, you know, try and, and highlight where things maybe could be better and then a report is produced and then it is then up to the individual organizations to, uh, you know, make sure that they strengthen their cybersecurity. So it gives us an example um, 
like a, a section of one of these um, test tables here. This is just an overview. The full test report will be in a lot more detail than this, and it will go down um, into uh, you know each of the individual elements that were tested and what the result of that test was. So this is just an overview of the whole thing. What we can see here, they tested the internal network. There were some fails on that, some critical issues. Critical issues means you need to deal with those straight away because they're going to be really problematic for you. On the Wi-Fi, it was low, <coughs> no real issues. There are a few low-level vulnerabilities which you may be able to sort. On the web app and the mobile app, there were some high vulnerabilities that need to be sorted. Probably you're going to have to go and talk to your uh, software developers to, to sort those issues out. There were some social engineering tests. So these are, you know, when people phone and pretend to be from um, somewhere else um, or you've, you've had some phishing email or something like that comes through. Um, and you can see here there was a big fail because lots of users gave their login credentials or they tried to log into the website that had come in on the phishing email or, you know, they fell for the trick when somebody called them and they handed over uh, personal information that they shouldn't have. Um, and on top of that, some viruses ended up on the network, probably because somebody gave somebody um, access to something they shouldn't have or uh, they opened something on an email attachment. Maybe they shouldn't have. Um, it's, you know, it's easily done. Uh, and the penetration test found lots of uh, potential issues um, and actual issues which constitute a cybersecurity risk. Now, further in this report, it'll be uh, more detailed about what these specific tests were. So this is just a kind of overview to, to give us an idea about what was discovered as a result of this testing. The only other part of this case study is this one sentence kind of at the bottom that tells us that as well as doing this, they also provide training on different aspects of cybersecurity, including how to complete a cybersecurity incident report. Scroll down and as usual, the exam board have given us a list of bullet points that we need to consider. Um, some of these may link to the specification. Occasionally, you may have to do a little bit of extra research to fully understand some of these things. It's not always um, covered 100% by what's in the spec. Occasionally, you have to go and find out a little bit more on top of that. But there are a, a list of five bullet points. And the top one tells us that we need to consider the types of clients. So we already mentioned this. Some of them are charities, government, so on. Um, why might they be targets? What data might they have that people are looking to get hold of? And why is it important they need uh, to protect the data? So, so you need to think about what have they got, not just because it breaks the law, because, I mean, that's the obvious one, um, you know, the GDPR, et cetera, um, and the consequences of that. But what other issues might there be um, as well as the law for, you know, their patients or, you know, for their customers, for them as an organization? Second bullet point, different types of security controls. Now, what do they mean by security controls? Well, if you have a look in the specification in Section 3.3, there's a whole list of these security controls. And the exam board will assume that you know what these are and how they work. Um, and so it is very likely you'll get some questions on this. So this is things like your biometric access, your swipe cards, uh, your alarms, your security guards, your cable locks, fireproof safes, firewalls, anti-malware software, patches, updates. Uh, so if you keep going, there's a long list um, uh, in 3.3 that basically takes you down uh, or all of the things you might be asked to question on, including procedures such as backups, remote working, managing devices such as laptops, um, smartphones, etc., user accounts, permissions, training, any emerging technologies. Now, that could be that could be anything. And again, you know, uh, this is one of those areas where because things change all the time, you don't always know what these emerging technologies are. 
and what the characteristics are of each of these different um, security controls. How the report from Pen Perimeter can be used by the client, including the impact and the implication of the recommendations on the stakeholders. So this is to do with um, what's the impact on the organization. So uh, are they going to have to do something about it? Is it going to cost them time? Is it going to cost them money? Who's going to be responsible for that? Um, so that's all of those things. All the people that are involved in the cybersecurity or have responsibility, uh, whether they're in the cybersecurity team or not, you know, they might be the, um, you know, the manager of the organization. They never get involved in the cybersecurity, but they still have a responsibility to keep the data safe. The last two. The training that Pen Perimeter would provide to its clients on how to respond to an incident. There is a whole load of stuff in the textbook and in the specification, again, about what is responding to an incident look like? What does an incident report look like? Who is responsible for which bit? What do you do first? What do you do second? Uh, do you have to contact the emergency services and so on? So again, go and have a look at that because they're going to be testing your understanding and your knowledge about these incidents and these incident reports and what they look like and the kind of information that is included in these reports. So that's it in a nutshell. That is the um, case study for Unit 3. It doesn't look um, all that bad, I don't think. It looks easier than some of the others we've had, but you know, don't be fooled. Do your revision. Make sure you're up to speed with all of this stuff. Um, and obviously, the exam isn't just this uh, report, so be prepared for other questions as well. Um, uh, you know, you need to make sure that your knowledge on this unit is is pretty good. It is only an hour long exam. You will find that you run out of time. Um, you know, if you uh, if you're sitting there thinking because you haven't done a, a, a good amount of revision, so good luck with it, and uh, hopefully. It will all go well for you.